Hi, this is Dr. John Bergduff. In this video, I want to introduce you to the Factor Theorem, which is a really cool theorem that has all kinds of neat applications, and I want to explain it to you a little bit. So here is the Factor Theorem. For any polynomial function f and each complex number k, x minus k is a factor of f of x if and only if f of k is equal to zero. Now I want to explain that a little bit, but before I go very far, I want to remind you that the complex numbers include all the real numbers and all the way down to all the integers and whole numbers. So in the next, in this video and several more after it, when I say k is a complex number, that could mean 3 plus i, or it could just mean 2. And all of those are complex numbers. Now, to understand this theorem, I need to focus on a little construction that you see sometimes in mathematical theorems, and that is this little phrase, if and only if. Now, if you're not terribly familiar with mathematical writing, you might just sort of think that sounds like we're stomping our feet, like, hey, if and only if. But if and only if is a statement that implies that the theorem can be read front to back or back to front. What do I mean by that? Well, that means that this factor theorem actually means two things. First of all, it means that if x minus k is a factor of f of x, then f of k is 0. But also means that if f of k is equal to 0, then x minus k is a factor of f of x. In other words, you can read that both ways. Uh, the first followed by the second, or the second followed by the first. And when you look at that, it may sound like, well, gee, isn't that really the same thing? Actually, it's not. I want to show you what you can do with the factor theorem using both aspects of that theorem, both reading it forward and reading it backwards, and give you an idea of why it's so important. So in the factor theorem, one way to read it is that if x minus k is a factor of f of x, then f of k is 0. Here I have a function for you, a particular example of what f of x might be. And suppose that my task is, like it says here, to find the zeros of the function. Now, the zeros of the function are the values of x that make y equal to 0. So this is really simply asking what values of x make the following true. 0 equal x squared plus 4x minus 5. And you might say, oh, wait, I remember this. This is actually going way back to stuff we did at the beginning of the class. This is just a quadratic equation, and we solve those, first of all, by seeing if we can factor the polynomial. And sure enough, this one factors really nicely, just x minus 1, x plus 5. No big deal. So, let's look at what the theorem says. If x minus k is a factor of f of x, well, look here. This is saying that x minus 1 is a factor of that function. If x minus 1 is a factor, then my k here is 1, and that's telling me that f of 1 must be 0. And guess what? That's the same thing we get when we take that x minus 1 and set it equal to 0 and solve for x, which is basically telling you that this version or way of reading the factor theorem is really just the zero product rule from way, way back. Now, when I have this x plus 5, think of that. You don't actually write it this way, but think of it as x minus negative 5 so that my negative 5 is my k, and that would tell you that f of negative 5 is 0. So just reversing the sign, f of negative 5 is 0, or negative 5 is a 0. And that's just exactly the same thing as setting the x plus 5 equal to 0 and solving for x. So one way of reading the factor theorem is really just the zero product rule. And it says that the zeros of this polynomial, just to be complete and give you the full answer, the zeros of this polynomial are 1 and negative 5. So that's familiar. Now, reading it the other way is a little bit different. 
and I'm going to show you how you can use this instead. So this one says that if f of k equals 0, then x minus 5 is a factor of f of x. Now, we want to show in this example that x minus 5 is a factor of this polynomial. But right away, we may begin to feel anxious because if you think about it, we have not done much with factoring polynomials that have degree of 3 or more. Uh, basically, all we've ever done is factoring by grouping, and I'm not going to take the time to show you this, but this will not factor by grouping. So this causes some anxiety. How do I factor something when that's bigger than a quadratic uh, polynomial, basically? Well, this is going to give you a hint. Um, if I want to show that x minus 5 is a factor, the question I can ask, I can ask myself is, can I show that f of 5 equals 0. If I can show that 5 is a 0, then that would prove to me that x minus 5 is a factor of the polynomial by this factor theorem. Now this I can do because showing that something is a 0 of a polynomial can be done by using synthetic division, where you simply take the number you're trying to test and put that in the divisor position and then copy the uh, coefficients of the polynomial and run through a synthetic division. And if it's true that 5 is a 0, when you get to the final position, you should have a 0. Let's see what happens. So we go right here, and uh, following the usual method for synthetic division, we copy the 2 down, then we multiply up 5 times 2 and put that in, up, up in the next column. 5 times 2 is 10. Multiply up, add down, negative 5 plus 10 is 5. Multiply up, take the 5 from the divisor times this 5 in the bottom. Uh, 5 times 5 is 25. Multiply up, add down, negative 3. And 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. And you get 0. So that shows indeed that f of 5 is 0. And by the factor theorem, that tells me that x minus 5 is indeed a factor of that polynomial. So that's pretty cool, too. But let's not stop there, because just showing that that's a factor of the polynomial gives me a way that I can move on to factor that polynomial completely, which we've not tried to do before use the fact that 5 is a 0 of the polynomial to factor the polynomial completely down into linear factors. Now, how can we use that fact to show that you can factor this completely into linear factors? Well, we're going to take a close look at the synthetic division that we just did, and here it is. I just copied it over. And this idea that we have seen before that when you're doing a division problem, the dividend is equal to the divisor times the quotient plus the remainder. Now, the dividend in the division that we're doing, if you look carefully at the numbers involved, the dividend, what you're dividing into, is basically this function f. So my function f is the dividend. f of x is the dividend. The divisor, okay, the connection we're making is that 5 is a 0 goes along with the fact that x minus 5 is a factor. So the divisor, when I did this division, was x minus 5. That's the factor theorem once again. Uh, times the quotient. Now, if we think of this as a division problem with synthetic division, the quotient is this polynomial described right here, excluding the final number. So that would be 2x squared plus 5x minus 3, divisor times quotient plus remainder, and the remainder is 0. Now, because the remainder of z is 0, what we have actually done is we have more or less stumbled into factoring this polynomial. I'm just leaving off the 0 this time. And the idea is that once we realize that 5 is a 0, and therefore x minus 5 is a factor, 
what's left as the quotient down here in the synthetic division is the other factor. And the reason that's cool is if I can factor, if I can use this factor theorem to get me a little ways into the factoring, then I think I can continue because what's left now is really just a quadratic expression and we can use the methods we've learned much, much earlier in the course to see if we can factor it further. In fact, it just looks like a trial and error factoring at this point and we can take care of that. So I believe if we kind of cast around for a while, I think you'll see you'll have to have a 2x and an x, and a 1 here and a 3 here, and this one will have to be a positive, and this one will have to be a negative. And if, check that out by the FOIL rule. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times 3 would give me 6x. My, minus 1x, so 6x minus 1x is 5x minus 3. Sure enough, that works. So the factor theorem can help me um, figure out how to factor the polynomial, which is pretty nice. Now, the one thing that's kind of weird here is that I sort of had to um, jump start us by using the fact that 5 is a 0. I had to somehow kind of like drop that hint that I somehow magically knew what one of the factors was, maybe using black magic. Uh, if I knew that, then that was enough of a jump start to factor the polynomial. In the next video, we're going to find out how I knew that 5 was a 0, and that uses something called the rational zeros theorem, which is really cool. But that's for another video.